Hey everybody, welcome to our Because of Bethlehem video series. My name is Kendra Schwartz. Hey Ken. Hey, I am joined by <laughs> Melissa Taylor. Hi everybody. And our friend Max Lucado. Hello. Max, Hello. you are the author of our online Bible yes. study Because of Bethlehem. And we are in week two. We're covering chapters mm -hmm. four to six this week. And this week we're talking all about anxiety. Yep, Does we talked about it a little bit. We, <laughs> we sure do. do. Anybody else struggle with that? Hello. 100%. Yes. 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 Yeah, I really do. <laughs> you know, um, Max wrote a book called Anxious for Nothing, which we did in online Bible mm -hmm. studies a few years ago. Yeah. This is actually our third online Bible studies. Yes with Max Lucado. We did Before Amen and then Anxious for Nothing. But in Anxious for Nothing, one of the things I remember is that the United States, which is where we live, is the most anxious nation in the world. I believe it. Well, and I don't want to live in the most anxious nation <laughs> no, in the world. No, that's not something that you want Do you know what all? I mean? It's like, but we don't have to live. We don't have to be anxious because we live in the most anxious nation, right? Very good point. Right. But you know, anxiety can rob you of your peace. It can steal your hopes of a beautiful Christmas or even a really enjoying your life. And it can make it hard to celebrate some things. And we don't want that. We right. don't want that. Max, one of the things that you wrote about in this book um, were interruptions and how when interruptions come into your life, they can bring fear. Mm -hmm. They can bring anxiety. Um, I mean, it can be... You could have plans for the day and get an interruption. So your plans are out the window. And yep. so that makes you nervous that you're not going to get everything done you needed to do. Or you talk about something more seriously in your book where your daughter lost a child mm. um, that she was carrying around Christmas time. And you know, how do you, every Christmas, a lot of times I'll think, wow, we lost, yeah. you know, a relative last Christmas. Or if there's anything that happened, it kind of will follow us yeah. and can bring you down at Christmas. And um, those interruptions can get the best of you. And I love that you address that in the book. But what exactly were you thinking? Like, why did you decide in this book about Jesus and all that he brings, um, why did you bring up anxiety in this? Well, um, you're right about anxiety. This is the most anxious nation in the world. Mm -hmm. And anxiety takes its toll on us. Uh, it takes its toll on us physically, uh, our neck, our, our mm -hmm. digestive right. system, our thought process. Uh, are all uh, severely hampered by anxiety. What's interesting about some of the research I've found is, is that, uh, yes, the United States is the most anxious nation in the world. And uh, the third world countries have a lower level of anxiety mm -hmm. than the more developed countries. What you know, we say? think with the yeah. right. smartphones and right. the laptops right. and the advanced technology that we would be more, uh, you know, more at peace but right. just the opposite is the case. In fact, when people come from third world countries to the United States, their anxiety level increases. Yeah, You'd never think that. But mm -hmm. there's something contagious about this anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I think a person has to uh, take a, take a, come up with a deliberate chaos to calm mm. uh, anxiety plan. Right. And, and one, of the, one of the things that we can do is recognize that interruptions are just part of life. Yeah. See, anxiety happens because life doesn't happen the way we thought it would. Anxiety happens right. because life doesn't happen the way we thought it would. Right. And we get this image in our mind that my life is going to be, and we get this uh, picture, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, kind of a play-by-play. -play. We get this idea that my life is going to be, I'm going to have this type of marriage, or I'm going to be single, or I'm, I'm going to work in this city, or I'm going to live, or I'm going to have this career. And that's fine. We call those dreams, you yeah. know. That's our vision for our life. But it, it just doesn't always happen that way. You know, this time of the year, Hallmark movies are everywhere, right? Right. Oh, yes. yeah. Do you yeah. like Hallmark movies? Well, I do, but I can tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> you, they're very oh, predictable. They're so predictable. predictable. That's one of the reasons I think I like they're them. They're so popular. <laughs> and I get that. If I was going to make a movie, I'd come up with, a, you know, a template and just yeah. make it, you know. Right. There's, it's a great there, industry. It's usually a small <laughs> yeah. town, a love story. Somebody's right? working in a bakery Somebody's or working a floral in a bakery shop. In this or they have to save the town. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. Usually there's a real handsome guy kind of like me who <laughs> yes, comes in yeah, yes. and shows up. And, and so, you know, we want that hallmark life, but it's just not there. It's yeah, just right. not there. And so the story of Christmas is not a hallmark story. I mean, if we could somehow interview the Mary, the mother mm -hmm. of Jesus, there is nothing about that story. <laughs> this, that she would have you planned. can't tell right. me that this peasant teenage girl in this tiny map dot of a town mm -hmm. uh, 
had any idea, number one, that, that she was going to uh, become pregnant before yeah. she got married. Number two, that was going to be a gift from the Holy Spirit that she would right. be a virgin when she was pregnant. I mean, and then that she would choose to go and live with a relative for a while right. during the pregnancy. And then she would, I mean, it, it was just one right. interruption, right. interruption, after interruption right. after another. She has to travel uh, during the season of childbirth from her town to Bethlehem because uh, the, the government, you know, conducted a census. They get there. There's no place to stay. Yeah. And, she, and the baby is born in a barn. Right. I mean, it's, it's just the most extraordinary <laughs> right. story. And it, it tells me that God comes through chaos. God mm -hmm. comes to us through chaos. And so when, when you're going through a time of, of chaos, maybe it's time for us just to lower our expectations. Mm -hmm. Christmas can either, mag Christmas has a way of magnifying life. You know, it, what's bad is really bad at Christmas. Mm -hmm. What's good is really good at Christmas. Right, that is so, so, so true. So just kind of take a breath and say, okay, I don't. here's what I hope happens, but Lord, yeah. I'm trusting that whatever happens, you can come through it mm -hmm. just like you came right. uh, in Bethlehem. Right. You know, right. that, that's a classic picture yes. of how an interruption brought the greatest so gift to the world. Very true. That is great. You know, one of the things that you all are going to read this week that you wrote on page 45, you actually referenced a verse, Psalm 11:4, which says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his throne in heaven. And I'm gonna be honest, when I first read that, I was like, I mean, this sounds so ignorant of me. Okay, how does that bring me peace? You know, mm -hmm. I'm looking for, you know, don't worry about anything, pray about everything, right. you know, the verses like that. But I'm then the more I looked at, I thought about it, I thought, oh yeah. Who is in control here? The Lord is in his temple. The Lord is on his throne. And as long as the Lord is on his throne, which is going to be now and forever, forever. then we don't, I don't have anything to worry about. I can find peace in that alone. And now that verse, I've repeated, do I not? She does. Like, she came out of her office door to tell me that. Yes. When I she did. read it. Yeah. Yeah. It's Just big revelation. really, really comforting thinking, I'm not on that throne. Yeah. So why do I try to sit there? He's That's on that good. throne. So that was a big help. That's There's good. only one throne in the universe, right? right? Yes. And it is occupied. Yes, it, it is. It is occupied. I think that the, the, the I, I think that God's sovereignty is the uh, cure for our anxiety. Mm. An understanding of sovereignty is a cure for anxiety. Mm -hmm. Anxiety happens when we think the world is out of control. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it, anxiety happens when we think nobody is. Uh, in the cockpit of this airplane. Mm -hmm. we, we expect to get on an airplane, there's going to be some turbulence. But if we if we saw the pilot when we boarded the flight and know that somebody's there, right. then we can at least say, okay, somebody's flying the plane. Yeah. Right. Nothing would be more chaotic than to be on a plane and realize there's nobody in the cockpit. <laughs> oh. And so so what, what sovereignty says is that uh, is that there is a being of great wisdom, a God of great goodness, and he is occupying the throne. I don't know where we're headed, and I realize we're passing through a time of struggle, but I'm going to trust him. Good, yeah. I'm going to trust him. Uh, we want to know exactly what the future holds, right. but we're never told that. Right. But we are told that there's a good God seated on the throne, and I can trust him. That's right. good, Max. Thank you gave you. us a lot to think about Thank as we you. enter into week two of study. So everyone, we're very excited for us to begin. And also we have a saying around here, which we said mm -hmm. last week, right. something that we believe with everything in us that when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Have a great yeah. week, y'all. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.